Well, I was just mentioned to Scott that he's moving right along at a brisk pace, and he's saying that he's happy about that. And I was mentioning one of the reasons why is because of the nature of this course where we spoon feed you. We just add one layer on at a time. A lot of classes, they're going to go right to, just give me a slow number one. Uh, okay, so yeah, so here, 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 here. That would be the technique. That's what they would start you with. So you know nothing about the footwork. You really know nothing about a double cut. You know nothing about trapping. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna take the knives and just throw them away for a little while, and actually go through some uh, Wing Chun eventually. But uh, uh, that's most guys wouldn't do that. They're gonna get you right to the the meat potatoes. Me, you know, we're gonna start with. You know, pouring the sugar into the bowl. We're gonna start getting the broth. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna add it all together. I'm not just gonna feed you a meal. We're gonna get all the ingredients and make sure we get all the ingredients down. That we know how to handle the ingredients before we get to the total, uh, the total uh, supper, or well, I want to say what the word is, uh, not chowder, uh, stew. Before we get to the stew, you know, we're gonna let it simmer before we start eating the actual soup, the stew. So that's important. I think that's very important. Uh, to letting you understand one little concept before we add another concept on top. I mean, you know, these guys will show a, they'll show a uh, handgun technique and they'll just be like, okay, do this. And that's it. That's the that's lesson. Okay, well, how do I do that with a foot? How do I get my body to move like that? And that stuff is all important. That's, uh, that's what we're doing here for you. And that's why this is such an important class before the hand-to-hand -hand class. You get to learn so it's easier to hand-feed you here to so feed you. <laughs> And again, as you uh, gain your skills, you may decide that, you know, against a Chinese guy in the, this hand, in his right hand, while you're in your left hand, that you want to do a two. But then when he has it in this hand, that you want to be a one kind of guy. Uh, that is part of your, uh, that's part of the skills that you have when you learn it all the different ways, okay? Okay, now we're on angle three. First thing I would like to say is do not choose to be a zone three only kind of guy. It ain't gonna work. It ain't never gonna work. Zone three is the most uh, unforgiving when you're trying to block attacks that aren't coming to zone three. That's about all I have to say. But see how that 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 down you know what I'm saying, that down angle, how that orient itself just is a natural flow. Yeah, well the three goes on. You like the double tap part of the three, but you don't like the three. There it is, right there. And I'm going to try to chop it. Woo! Try to, uh, when you use the three, when you use the three, you want to hold the knife as long as you can. Especially for those higher techniques that you want to come up. What he did was he came all the way up here, and then he had to swing back around to get in our knee pit. So when you're in a three mode, like I was saying, in general, you want to come underneath the attack. So just throw a uh, throw a two at me. So I'm going to be here. That's where I'm going to be. I don't want to come up and then try to chase it back. Around. I was trying to go around the knife. Oh, right, right. Arms up right, yeah, so if you just came here, you would have made that cut a lot easier. I'll we'll try it again. Yeah. Okay, stop it. And again, I mean, you're out of the way, I'm out of the way, nothing happened. But at least your knife was in a more deployable state for a three. When we were doing for a three. three. We were doing the twos, I felt like my arm was way out here too much, uh -huh. too long. Yeah, you want, to, you want to be moving here. I mean, you can bring it up to here when you're going to do a one or a two. You can like, you, as you start your movement, you can bring your post up a little bit because you know you're going to be right here to block this. But uh, in general, uh, you don't want to, yeah, he's saying he feels like he gets his arm out too far. You don't want the arm going out until you're actually performing an angle. It's okay to cheat a little bit, come up here. I mean, you know he's coming with a knife high. So you're going to come over here a little bit, get into a defensive stance. I mean, you're still ready to easily defend this, but you're more ready to easily defend up here. So there's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, keep your elbows and your hands in close until you have to make that angle of attack, which he does pretty good at that. Uh, anyways, I, I really think the reason he does good at that is because of the way that we teach our uh, shooting system here at uh, Brooks uh, Brook Kwondo, uh School of uh, Killing. Uh, <laughs> What we do is we, when we bring it up, we do bring the pistol up here so we can get this first shot off. Now that is the way we always do it. Even if you had to make a 60 yard shot, I still advise that you bring it here so that if he's 60 yards away and you know you have a, uh, a, a safe uh, area behind him, there's no reason to start taking those first shots to distract his attention. 
Now we bring things here. So things are here, right here. And this is what he's used to, his hands, you know, working from this position. So now you'll be taking your second and third shot here, fourth and fifth, and now you can start worrying about getting that sight if he's 60 yards away. Now if he's not 60 yards away, guess what? Exact same thing. Now we're just going to be here like this, and here's this shot right here. Bang, now as we're stepping off here, we're going to come right here. Now we get those head shots on the flank. Same thing over and over again. You see I'm moving to my, my, uh, my zone one side as I draw and shoot. Again, so when I shoot, I'm practicing my knife fighting. When I'm practicing my knife fighting, I'm practicing my shooting. It's all the same. The hands are the same. That's why he's pretty good at keeping his hands in. And again, I digress. It's a red on. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, you're, you're hauling, like you say, you're hauling out. It's not a terrible technique because you're not going to do this technique, you know what I'm saying? But again, you get in a freaked out some kind of situation where it's all like this and that's the only way you can move. Well, guess what? He's practiced that. He's going to be able to employ that uh, with, some, uh, with some experience behind him where somebody else, you know, they fall against something, their knife is like this, and here this guy comes with a fork. You know, what are they going to do? They're not going to know what to do. Scotty's going to bring this thing right here and be able to chop this guy. Okay, uh, like somebody's on your arm here, you're in a fight, you're, you know, that's the only thing you've got. I mean, any of these things could happen. You know, on your one in a million day, it's not going to happen the way you wanted it to. It's going to happen the way it wants to. And that might be, there's a guy next to you and you have nowhere to go but to bring this knife up to block this thing. Well, you've done that, you know, a couple times, three times in a row right here. Okay, so I here. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, I'm going to kill myself. That was the one? Yeah, that was the one. That's all right. I mean, it, it was just too high to get the angle right. That's all it was. Yeah, I'm going to kill myself. And uh, I'm going to kill myself. That's the one that's blazing out there. I'm going to kill myself. What's out there? Yeah, and that's what this that's what all these reps do too. Is you know, a lot of people cut themselves during knife fights. I don't know if you realize this. Uh, I've seen several guys who have been in knife fights and they were the only guy who had a knife and they're cut because they cut themselves. Just uh, that's what this does, keeping this hand out of the way, learning when we get to bring our other hand in the fight, learning that when this one goes in and when this one goes in, that they can't be there at the same time, or you're gonna get cut. Uh, and we'll get to all that. I'm going to do is try to beat me to that upward boost. Yeah, I'm going to do it. It's not good. Okay. Redo those because you didn't finish the cut. Remember, even if it's not there, perform the angle, okay? What we're trying to do is to force you to perform two angles, okay? So even if it's not there, you saw me, you know, I'll miss the first one and the second one, but I perform both angles because he might be there one time and I want to be able to do that. Also, uh, I'm not even going to jump ahead. <laughs> So, uh, grab him with that 11. So, I'm going to get a soft finger. That's what you got to do. And when that comes back down, make it a, make it a 1. Okay. One more time, you're like, I'm going to get a soft finger. Yeah, see how good it works? If you do it, I'm going to get a soft finger. There it is. See, just throw that other one. That could have been my, that could have been my uh, karate if you want. I mean, no, no, because you were up here. You could have just spun that number. So, you just come up this way, right? Oh. Just spin it this way. Boom, there it is right there. This fight's over. You know? When you, and, and believe me, take a uh, take a big two at me. Go ahead. Bam! Jesus! That's where that second one can be, okay? I mean, there's no reason why, you know, this one has to be where I'm going to finish. Yeah. You know, I don't have to come, I don't have to come back up here. I can just come here and wish it through here because I'm moving out of the way and my body is going to drive this knife by the way I'm moving. Yeah. Because I came here like this, and then I just came here like this. So I'm using all pivot, uh, pivot, pivot on my hips. That's a pivot. When you pivot from your hips, that's a pivot. So I'm using a pivot on my hips to drive that blade. The knife used my arm. I mean, my knife was here, and I'm just going to leave it there and come like this. So I have a lot of power behind it. I don't have to retract it. It makes it quicker. That's uh, me. Op Motto talks about that, you know, uh, the continuous cut. You know, that's a continuous cut. Okay. And where the hell are we? That's, uh, you have this in your hand. I have this in my hand. You are now in your right hand. I'm trying to I'm trying to do threes against a right hand. Okay. And you right, give me a right hand. Oh let's change that. Do a no I'll be cheap. I'm gonna make it easier on myself. Okay, and uh let's go back. 
situation, the more realistically I start doing it. So I'm uncomfortable with this three, so I'm really compensating by going hard. lesson on that step. There's a whole concept like this. Yeah, well, I uh, just, we'll get there when we get there. I don't want to jump ahead too much. There's a whole lesson on that. There's a whole lesson. So, I mean, there's a whole concept within a lesson like that on how to properly step hitting when he's hooking uh, what I call like a hooking three. And a three. And uh, stuff that. Stuff that. And again, that's the way you want to be. I mean, once a uh, once I screw up and I now I know I don't know when he's exactly gonna attack, I mean all, all of a sudden you see my feet, I'm like freaking, where do I go, where do I go, where do I go? That's what you want to be like. Because a guy who doesn't know what you're doing, who's never been, the guy who's coming to rob you, okay, is probably not a guy who spent a lot of time in the military, spent a lot of time in karate schools, uh, martial schools, combative schools, uh, studying a lot of different martial art uh, knife fighting technique. So now when he all of a sudden sees you like this. This guy might freak out and just run away. It's his first time looking at a guy who either looks like he's scared to death and you've got him pinned in a corner and he's going to come out fighting like a tiger, or he's going to realize that you have some kind of mad skills that he is not ready to put his life on the line to test today. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you do do that, where you make a move early, stay in that stance and now just get ready for it because now you're really ready for it. This is much more mimicking a real knife fight than what we're doing here with a uh, I'm gonna kill you, stop, stay back. It's just not the way it's gonna be. You're gonna have your knife, you saw some jerk off on your car, you popped your knife out, you got deployed, you're over here, all of a sudden uh, your car just happens to be in a corner of the parking lot, and you're here getting this, and all of a sudden this guy's got you cornered. Well, guess what? You better be ready to go with this guy, and you better be able to talk shit uh, while you're there. Not necessarily talk shit, but talk. And again, talking means you're breathing. And if you're breathing, that means you have a chance to continue this fight. Once you start holding your breath in, like this, you're going to run out of air. You're not going to be able to fight. So again, that's where the talking shit comes in, is that it keeps you breathing, keeps you talking. Now, do I have to talk shit like that? Uh, like I do? No, I could say something else like, hey, man, you really don't want to do this. You really don't want to do this. There's a camera right up there watching. Everybody sees it coming. There's somebody else just got out of the elevator. There's all kinds of things you can say to this guy. But because you practice talking shit, or at least talking while he's here, you're in a comfort zone, okay? Your OODA loop isn't getting all out of control. Like, oh, we're talking now, we're talking. Turn off the fighting program, set the fighting program to the side. You know, hold, pause that one, we're talking now. And then this guy attacks you, it's like, oh, turn off the talking program, it's time to fight. You know, you don't have those kind of time. But if you practice that while you're doing this stuff, and again, this is just the beginning level where you might want to talk a little crap. But eventually you want to talk a lot of crap while you're doing this because you want to be able to walk and chew bubblegum. Because in the real world, that's what you're going to have to do. You have to tell this guy, stop, stay back, man. What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, you don't know what you're doing. I got a knife. I know what I'm doing. You want to fight me with a knife? What are you, fucking kidding? You know, you got to say this stuff to this guy to either make him come with an attack that is, uh, is ill-advised or to have him do something advised, which is get the fuck out of your face because he's about to get whacked. Uh, all this stuff comes into play. So, again, I uh, jump ahead. What, what, what are we on? So I'm doing a three and you're doing uh, the right hand. I haven't done right. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna kill you. Stop back. And again, I shouldn't even be asking. I should just sit down and say, do you remember what angle we're on? And let him come. Do you remember what angle we're on? So, I'm gonna kill you. No, just, say, just say yes and then go with it. Okay, and uh, stop sit back. I'm gonna kill you. Stop sit back. Stop 
about that. That's coning. I just wanted to do a cone. Every now and then I just got to do a cone. Me too. That's a uh, uh, two cones, yeah. But I mean, uh, there I'm, I'm just showing the cone that I'm coming out catching you before you attack. And that's where we're going to get this guy later on, where he don't even know what's happening. He thinks he's attacking, and then he quickly finds out, whoops, I wasn't attacking. So give me another 12. That's that. I'm going to kill you. And where he's at right now is exactly where I want him to be, and it's kind of where I am. Because you just force yourself to do reps over and over and over and over. You get to this state where you stop blocking out the conscious mind. And that's what the overload is really for. That's why you just go through drills, 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 drills. We're trying to overload you so that you don't use the conscious mind. I want these things, I want these things taking the express lane. Unconscious to the hands. Unconscious to the hand. That's what uh, they call the void. I learned this from uh, Miyamoto Musashi in uh, Go Ren No Show. Is that it? Uh, Book of Five Rings. Uh, fighting from the void. That's where you want to be, where there's nothing in the way. Okay, you're so mumbled up and confused that now you have to act. And what winds up happening is it totally circumvents that uh, that mumbled, jumbled, conscious mind, and it goes directly from the subconscious to the hand. That's what we're really trying to do. By, uh, you don't realize it, but that's what I'm really trying to do by just doing these over and over and over and over. Okay, I so. was I was really tired halfway through, and that was like autopilot. Was right, and that's where we want. We want to get you that autopilot. Okay, and the hard part is is remembering what freaking angle you're on and what hand you fought last, and that's where it gets confusing. And right now, I'm highly confused. I'm going to go to the angle for it. I'm going to kill you. Stop today. 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 And I'm going to kill you. Stop today. We gotta kill Whoa, two handed on me. Did you see how your hand got in there first? You never want your hand in the zone first. You always want the knife first. Okay? And, uh, uh, that's because he hasn't learned it yet, but he sees me do it and he's trying to uh, be like daddy. <laughs> and uh, I'm watching where that's on the right line. Are you ready? Uh, I'm gonna kill you. Stop, sit down. Because he didn't use his hand that time. And I'm gonna kill you. Stop, sit down. I'm gonna kill you. Stop, sit Nice. I guess now we're right in Chinese, still zone three. Whew. I'm going to kill you. All you really do is dodge that thing. Now hurt. it's going to be on the side. Yeah. Being with the other wrist. It's going to hurt. I'm going to kill you. Stop it out. I'm going to kill you. Stop it out. I'm going to kill you. Stop it out. One. That's the one that works. The one that works. Stop that. Oh, you got me right in the freaking eye. Big nerve right now. That didn't drop the knife. Oh, what is that? You see it bulging Ooh, already? Was... You got me right on the nerve with the tip of your knuckle. That was nasty. Right? That's uh, right on the carpal tunnel nerve. Whew. I'm surprised I was able to keep the knife in my hand. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm going to kill you. Stop that. to find out is that stupid little technique I can't remember what it was like a uh, bird's beak yeah you find out how quickly uh, that thing's effective because like I said we're gripping we're gripping these three fingers so these two wind up just hanging out there you wind up smacking people with that freaking knuckle and it digs in there deep on a nerve every now and then since you told me that I have not forgotten so what do you got you got a uh, 12 foot what do you got this back so much. It's brutal. There's lots of different things you can do with these fingers. Guys teach different things. Guys teach just leave the, uh, the thumb on the top of the blade, which is how I started. I had the thumb on top of my blade and I had my finger hanging down. But then I pretty quickly realized that when you have a tiny ass uh, a blade, which you're really probably going to carry, a legal size folder, this finger is highly in the way. And this thumb, while it's really nice to kind of direct the knife, after about, you know, 
going through all these drills, you don't really need directions anymore. You know where the tip of the knife is. So what I start doing is I start pinching these two fingers together like that. And what that creates is a very strong bony structure that's going to be your, uh, no, your, uh, what is it? your guard. It's going to be your knife guard for the fingers that are holding on the blade. And an auxiliary thing is it becomes a great thumper. Should you miss a technique and you thump that guy with this right here, 